Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Sawati in Dreptas Grove, Anathan Pindika's Park. There the Venerable Sariputta addressed the monks thus, Friends, monks, friend, they replied. The Venerable Sariputta said this, Friends, there are four kinds of persons found existing in the world. What for? There are some persons with a blemish. Does not understand it as it actually is thus. I have a blemish in myself. Here some person with a blemish understands it as it actually is thus. I have a blemish in myself. Here some person with no blemish does not understand it as it actually is thus. I have no blemish in myself. Here some person with no blemish understands it as it actually is thus. I have no blemish in myself. Now these are, we're talking about the subtler observations in the meditation. When you don't see that you have a blemish, that means you're caught up in the craving and clinging cycle. So you don't see it as it actually is. You're identifying with it. This is me. This is mine. This is who I am right now. And I don't like it and I want it to change. And then we get into our thoughts to try to control the feelings. Now, a person that has no blemish but doesn't understand it, this is where the neutral feeling is found. And you don't really see neutral feelings very often. I mean, you look at the dog, and it's a dog, and you don't, it's not pleasant, it's not unpleasant. So what happens is a very subtle attachment to the ignorance arises. And what is ignorance? Not seeing and understanding the Four Noble Truths. That's what ignorance is. And that means that you're not seeing the subtle cravings that arise. Wherein the person with a blemish who does not understand it as it actually is thus, I have a blemish in myself, is called an inferior of those two persons with a blemish. Here the person with a blemish who understands it as it actually is thus, I have a blemish in myself, it is called the superior of those two persons with a blemish. Now what are we talking about here? The sharper your awareness of the distractions that occur. People have distractions all day. Their mind is going a thousand miles away quite often. And you get caught in all kinds of different things and not paying attention to what's happening and they don't realize that that is a hindrance in itself. So they're considered inferior because they're not aware of what his mind is doing in the present moment. And when you notice that you have these kind of things and you six are them, you turn into a superior kind of being. Your mind is much more alert. You start seeing all of these things that arise and pass away as being impersonal. And there's relief in that. The more you let go of craving, the more you start directing your mind to your wholesome object. What is that? Your object of meditation and having uplifting, happy thoughts. You are a superior type of person. 
Have you ever walked into a room where there's somebody that's depressed? What do you feel like when you walk in? Heavy. Heavy. That's being inferior. Going into a room where there is a person or a bunch of people that are depressed and recognize it as being like that and you just start letting it go and start radiating loving kindness, now you've turned into a superior being. And the people that are depressed will start to come up to the level of your mind. If you're not really aware of that, it's very easy to get caught by it. I used to spend a lot of time going into the hospitals, uh, two or three times a week actually. And I was seeing people that were suffering greatly physically and mentally. And I got in the habit of when I'm walking down the hallway, I'm telling myself it doesn't matter what they are experiencing, it's okay for them to experience it. I can love them no matter what. So generally, by the time I get to that person's room, I'm feeling pretty good. And I walk in, and I sit down, and they quite often will go, there's relief, because I'm giving them the space to be the way they want to be at that moment, or the way they are at that moment, doesn't have anything to do with wants quite often, and allowing it to be okay in my mind. And as I allow them that space and send them love and kind thoughts, then the pain that they experience starts to go away. Now this is a definition of compassion. An awful lot of people, we have, we've had some articles about compassion come through here in magazines and they talk about getting burned out from practicing compassion. Why in the world would you get burned out practicing compassion? Well, I'm trying to take some of their pain away. Stop right there. I can't take your pain away. You can't take my pain away but I can be happy in the present moment. And guess what happens when that happens? And that's how you turn into a superior type of being. And don't get prideful about it. <laughs> Six are that too. <laughs>